Hey there everyone, thank you so much for being here, thank you so much for watching. In this video I'm finally going to show you how to increase a Synology volume by introducing larger capacity drives. I'm saying finally because this topic is something that I was asked about numerous times in the past. I always said I'm going to create a video about it, so this video is long overdue. Obviously this process is a bit more involved than just taking a Synology NAS out of the box, placing drives in it and creating a volume from scratch. In this case, we already have a volume and we already have data on it. Obviously, we don't want to lose that. Of course, the process is possible, but there is a certain way you need to go about doing it. By the way, please take into account that this process is only possible if you are using a volume with a RAID array that has redundancy built into it. RAID 1, RAID 5, RAID 6, SHR, SHR 2. If you're using, for example, RAID 0, once you take out one drive, the volume is stopped, so take that into account. So, from a 10,000 feet perspective, what we're going to do, I'm going to go to my Synology NAS, I'm going to take out one drive. At that point, the Synology NAS will probably start beeping because it will identify a drive failure. I'm going to replace with a new drive. Then I'm going to go into DSM because we will need to do something that's called volume repair. This can take many hours to complete according to the amount of data you have on your volume. Only that process finishes, will I be able to take out the second drive, again volume repair, and then the third drive, again volume repair, and then the fourth drive, again volume repair, only then, only after my NAS only has four drive bays. Only after I replace the fourth drive, will I be able to increase the volume size. Up until then I will not have the option to. So, let's go over to my NAS in my network rack, let's start the process, let's go. Alright guys, so we are at my network rack and you're probably going to be able to hear the buzzing of the fans. Now I know it's not much, I have a lot of structural limitations here, but this is my rack, this is my unified devices and here is my Synology DS923+. Plus. Now let me start off before I pull any drives out, let me start off by saying things can go south, shit happens. Make sure, especially before a process like this, that your Critical data is backed up. This, this is true for every day of the year, but especially before a process like this, because if something goes, uh, goes south in this process, you might find yourself without your critical data. So make sure you have backups. All right, so this is my NAS. I'm going to replace my first drive, three terabytes with this four terabytes drives, drive, sorry. So, let's start off by pulling the first drive. Alright, so I'm going to pull the camera a bit closer so that the view is a bit better. Alright, I hope you guys can see. So, so, I'm going to start off with this bay right here. I'm just going to just pull it off. I'm sure that my Synology NAS will start beeping any second now. In the meantime, I'm taking the drive out of the bay. I'm going to open up. Here's the beeping. I'm going to open up the new bag. Here's the drive. It's a red, red plus or red pro or whatever. All right, it's ready. So let's, let's put it in. All right, so the drive is in, but it's not enough. We need to go into DSM to start the volume repair process. Let's go ahead and do that next. All right, guys, so I went to my computer. I opened up my web browser. I went into the DSM web interface and immediately I was taken to the storage manager and I found out that my uh, volume is in a critical state, which makes sense. So before I do anything else, I'm going to go into my volume and you can see it's in a degraded state and that's because it doesn't have a, a, a drive. So we'll click on repair now. It's going to ask us which of the new drives we, we want to absorb to our volume. I'm going to select my new drive, click on next, click on apply and click on OK. At this point, immediately, 
the repairing process will begin. In fact, here it is, it has, it, it has begun, sorry. Now, until this process finishes, it can take hours before it finishes. Do not try to take the second drive out. You need to wait for this process to finish. So I'm going to pause the recording and resume it once this process is done. All right, guys, so the volume repair is now done. So now I can go ahead and replace the second drive. And actually, I'm going to speed run this because it's just repetitive. In fact, I'm going to speed run this, the volume repair, the third drive replacement, the volume repair, and I'll talk to, and I'll talk to you guys after I have replaced my fourth drive so in the final section up until then it's just repetitive okay so speed running All right, guys, so my fourth drive has been replaced and the volume repair, the last volume repair process is now complete. And now it's time to actually go and expand my volume size. So in order to do that, I'm already logged into my DSM. I'm going to open Storage Manager. I'm going to click, to click on Volume 1. Now, here's my volume. It's currently 7.8 terabytes. I'm going to click on the three dots here. Settings. I'm going to scroll down to modify size. Here's the max allocatable size because I have already replaced all of my hard drives. I'm going to click on max and save. And in a few seconds my volume size will be increased and actually there are a few observations that I would like to share with you if you're following along with the process. First of all, if you're using SHR like I do, SHR can expand the volume size even along the way. As long as you've already replaced at least half of your drives, SHR will take one of the larger drives and use it for parity. And then the other drives, it can sort of split into chunks and then work with the chunks. So you will be able to increase the volume size along the way so every time you replace a new hard drive with a larger capacity drive you will be able to add its capacity unlike traditional RAID arrays that's the first observation second observation after every uh, uh, replacement of a drive I don't know if it's if it's because I have data scrubbing scheduled enabled a lot after every volume repair process DSM initiated a data scrubbing cycle now data scrubbing is a very intensive process so you don't have to do it after every drive replacement you can if you want save it to the last uh, um, volume repair process and then data scrubbing that's just an observation I have made there so guys this is the entire process as you can see my file my volume was already increased to 10.5 terabytes because there's a bit of an overhead and then some of the uh, allocatable the space is taken to uh, towards a file system overhead and parity and etc etc so that's the process in itself even though it's a very let's say sensitive process if done correctly it's almost bulletproof it's not complicated and not something very difficult and I hope you like this video. If you liked it, please consider liking and subscribing. This really helps the channel, liking and subscribing. The video will help to get it in front of more people on YouTube. And it really does support the channel. So guys, I hope to see you all in my next video. And take care guys. Bye bye.